Okay, welcome back. And here we are again, underneath Flexo, my K truck. And uh, got another kind of interesting problem. That's, uh, the four wheel drive has stopped working. So I've dug into a little bit already. And I'm gonna show you how the system basically works. We've got two actuators. I've got one back here. And we've got one up here. Both of them vacuum actuated and both of them have two electric solenoids that connect to function. Got a push rod in the back here. This moves forward to go into four, moves backwards to go into two, and is controlled by this diaphragm here. There should be vacuum on this side to pull the rod that way to shift into four, and on this side to shift it back into two. But what's happening is when I select four-wheel drive, I'm getting vacuum on this side and on this side. And when I select two-wheel drive, there's no vacuum on either side. Did a little bit of work on these uh, solenoids up here. I found the top one wasn't functioning at all. And just for kicks, I threw it into the sonic cleaner. I didn't really think it would do anything, but oddly enough it did. So that solenoid is functioning now. But I'm getting power to both of those solenoids at the same time when I push the switch. So. I'm thinking I likely have an electrical problem because the front solenoids are getting no power at all. But like the problem last time, I don't have a wiring diagram for this. So it means that I kind of have to wing it. I'm gonna ring out all the wires with the ohm meter again, and hopefully I can come up with kind of a rudimentary wiring diagram for it. And if I can come up with that rudimentary wiring diagram, maybe I'll actually be able to diagnose what is going on. Obviously having a wiring diagram handy would have made this a lot easier, but I don't have one, so we're gonna wing it and hopefully, hopefully we'll get something with it. Okay, so I rang out as many of the wires as I could, but it started to get a little bit awkward trying to go behind the cab and then into the cab and straddle everything uh, by myself. So I had to wait for Sue to come home to get me a hand with it. But we have rung out a whole bunch of the wires now and uh, I'll kind of show you what we found. So these are the two plugs uh, in question. They're the ones that go to those front solenoids I was talking about. And here's our shift switch. So when you push the shift switch for four wheel drive, we do have power on one side and it does make properly, but it doesn't seem to send any power to here. It only seems to send power to the rearward solenoids. Knowing the black wire, we already uh, ohmed that out and it ohms to ground as is expected. And the red and blue wire here, one would think would be switched power, controlled by this, which as we discovered is not. Next course of action was to see if we have any continuity to the fuse block. Took the ohm meter, rang it out to every one of the fuses and to all of these wires, and found no connectivity there either. That means either we have a break in the wire somewhere, or this is on a completely different circuit of some sort. So Susan hopped underneath and she followed the wires. So the wires go down here and then they go into the main harness, which runs across to the frame rail and then back. You have to come back here and keep on following it. it comes along here and then down this uh, transmission cross member. And we can see right here, we've got a red and blue wire that comes out. And right here as well, a red and blue wire that comes out. So we were working with a thinner gauge wire up there. Um, again, hop on this thing with the ohm meter and uh, connect it up to the front. Uh, two plugs there and we do have connectivity. So we know that that's the same circuit. Following the second wire, or the other side of the plug. It runs down over top of the T case, and then that little switch right there. Now that switch, as far as I can tell, will make or break depending on 
where the uh, T-case is actually selected to. By putting an ohmmeter across these two guys here, and then manually shifting the T-case into four-wheel drive, uh, we were able to get connectivity so we know that the switch works. And then by putting a test light into the red-green wire on this side and then turning the ignition on, we have power. That leads us to what's most likely happening, is if you can look in here, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see this, but these plugs are just completely full of corrosion. So I suspect what's going on is that we're getting power up to the plug, but we're not getting it through the plug and to the switch. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna try and clean these up. I don't know how well it's gonna work. If it doesn't, we're just gonna replace this plug altogether. And I suspect that's going to fix our problem with the front differential lock. And uh, then we've just got to figure out why the rear two solenoids are both turning on at the same time and uh, fighting each other. So we'll go ahead and clean these and then give it another test. So I was gonna try and depin them and then uh, sand off all the corrosion and that would have worked just fine probably for the, uh, the male side of the plug, but not so much for the female. I'm gonna try this. I don't know if it's gonna work, but uh, kind of an experiment. I just uh, found some pretty crappy vinegar I had laying around inside one of my cabinets. Filled up a container and I've dunked both the plugs in there. So I'm gonna let it sit in this uh, well, vinegar and whatever else is in that for a little bit and uh, see how that comes out. All right, it's been in there for about 10 minutes, so see how it looks. Too bad. A lot of it's come off. I mean, got some shine down the bottom now, at least. Kind of what it looked like before. I mean, this could be a little bit better, but I don't think it's going to do for now. I'll probably end up replacing these plugs anyways, but I think it should do for uh, for testing. So assuming this wiring works the way I think it does, when I push this forward now, the test lamp should illuminate. Okay, looks like success. So that means we should now have power to the uh, front differential lock. And then just gotta figure out what's up with the back. Okay, so this is interesting. So you have power on both plugs when four-wheel drive is engaged, which is the same thing that we have happening in the back. I think we're gonna do some quick tests on the front solenoids here and see if one of them is normally open and the other one is normally closed. Because if that's the case, then it might indicate that we actually have the wrong solenoid in the back. Don't know, just speculating right now, but uh, We'll do a couple tests on these front ones and uh, see what we come up with. Right, so somebody from the uh, mini truck group was good enough to send me a wiring diagram and I was able to confirm that uh, it is correct that uh, the front and rear solenoids uh, are powered at the same time, which made a lot of sense just by uh, the way that uh, this thing seemed to be wired. What it turned out to be was this vacuum line was hooked up to this side and this plug was over here. And it's been like that since the day I bought it and the four-wheel drive has never quite worked properly. Just by switching that around and now that the solenoid is, uh, is functioning because it was all rusted up before, um, now that it's functioning properly, uh, everything seems good. So I think finally after over a year of owning this thing, I won't have to crawl underneath to manually put it in four-wheel drive anymore. That project is at least complete, but while I was under here, I did notice this. Yeah, that goes all the way underneath. When the parts come in to do the CV boot here and CV boot here, I think we'll uh, drop the entire subframe down and weld up the frame at the same time because uh, it's getting pretty bad. So, anyways, have a good one. Okay, push engage. Yeah. We disengage. Yeah. Engage. Yeah. Disengage. Yeah. And 
again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. Okay, you turn it off.